this play is really a really fast paced dialogue about about relationships and responsibilities to each other responsibilities to parenthood but also to marriage you do not need to know a doll's house to appreciate and enjoy a doll's house part two my name is Scott Free, and I play Torvald Helmer in the play. Uh, you don't have, need to have seen the first show. However, uh, I am a character that is in both. Uh, not everyone in this play is in both plays, but uh, uh, Torvald is the husband of A Doll's House. By the time you get to A Doll's House Part 2, he is the ex-husband. Uh, belated spoiler alert, I guess, there, but... Uh, uh, in the interim, uh, th there's a 15 years to take place between the previous play and this uh, sequel. Uh, and so he has to figure out how to get by without his wife. Then they meet again. And uh, that's the question. What happens now? What are they going to say to each other? And uh, how, how will they treat each other? And I'll probably lose my job and lose my friends and lose my savings. But I didn't. So hopefully... I won't be remembered the way you remember me when I'm gone. You can even go and write a new book now where I'm a better man. Here, take it. You won't take it? Thank you. Thank you, Torvald. I appreciate you did this, but I don't need this anymore. What? Divorce. I don't, I don't need it, but I really do appreciate that you- No, I can't wait with you. I can't win with you. I can't fucking win with you. Nothing to win. Stop trying to win. I'm just trying to be a good guy here. You go and you make everything about you. You even made my book about you. I'm in there, aren't I? It's my book. Yeah, but I think we need to have a second play because there's so many questions that were kind of up in the air after the first one. And uh, I think this play really kind of addresses like, well, okay, so once you leave, what, what now? I mean, leaving is one thing, but it doesn't mean relationships necessarily go away. My name is Kristen Brownstone, and I am playing Nora in A Doll's House Part 2. And gosh, I don't even know where to start um, to talk about the the complexity of this character and um, and how compelling she is. I had the benefit of seeing the original Broadway cast and knowing nothing about the play. And I was constantly delighted and surprised by the turn that all of the characters make in this play. Um, so, you know, I you while I agree with everyone, you don't have to know Doll's House to see this play. I think if you do know Doll's House and you know those characters, this is a delicious um, follow-up on, on who they've all become and what this playwright has done uh, with their characters. Nora, in particular, um, she's very strong. That was one of the surprises that came because we don't see her that way. We see her as manipulative. We see her as wily. We see her as seductive in, in the first play, but we, um, we don't necessarily, necessarily see her brains. And, and that comes out very clear in this play. And, I, and even though I was living by myself, for everything I did, every decision I made from what I ate to when I went to bed, I could hear a voice in the back of my head that either sounded like you or my father or the pastor or any number of other people that I knew. And I'd always in my head somehow managed to check in with that person to see what he thought even though that person wasn't a person, was, was my thinking of a person. And so as long as that continued, I decided I'd live in silence, not speaking and avoiding the speaking of others. And I'd live like this until I couldn't remember what other people sounded like, until I no longer heard a voice inside my head other than my own voice or what I was certain had to be my voice comes in so she comes in very successful she comes in very strong she's got very strong opinions she knows what she wants i like to think that that 15 year interval she struggled a lot as well i'm a mom myself and i don't think it was easy for her to leave those kids and um you know i i think that it seemed easy 
perhaps when she did it in the first play and, they, and she, she doesn't refer to it a lot here, I think it was very, very difficult and something that she struggles with. My name is Elizabeth Lipa and I'm playing the character of Emmy in the show. Um, she's a bit of a hard character for me to describe. I, I think she's really complex in a lot of ways and there's a lot that is a hard, she's a lot to unpack even with just the small scene. Um, that's small <laughs> scene between me and Nora. But um, the thing that I really think is interesting about her is that um, as like a reader, you know, when I read Doll's House, I'm like rooting for Nora. Like, yeah, independent woman, look at her, you know, freeing women from marriage. But I think Emmy comes in and she brings to question, you know, what a lot of these women had to deal with and what they left behind. So as much as you want to be on, on Nora's side and you applaud what she's doing, I think Emmy kind of comes in and she brings in that conflict and reminds the audience of um, the difficulties that Nora had to face leaving and also, you know, what her children had to face when she left for 15 years. Um, now tell me something you remember about me. You? Yes. Uh, what should I, uh, well, here's something, um, when you were born, yes, I had you very fast. I mean, you came right out of me, like you were racing to get out into the world, like you couldn't wait. The boys, they were very slow. I was in labor for, oh God, it was terrible, but you were very easy. So, you can put that in your book of memories. I'm Suzanne Stern playing Anne-Marie, the old nanny of Nora Helmer who left. Uh, all the difficult questions about life for a woman in marriage and in the, in the late 19th century come back. Um, women had almost no economic civil, civil rights, very few did they have. And both for Nora and Anne Marie, and in another way, the young girl, uh, Emmy, those questions all arise. And I think we grapple with them in this play. Uh, Anne Marie raised Nora as a little girl and um, into young womanhood. And now she, we are encountering each other after 15 years. I have now taken care of the household. Nora's children who were small have grown to early adulthood. And she encounters Nora, Nora's newfound womanhood in her own way. Um, she probably has very clear ideas about woman's place in marriage and family and taking care of children. But Nora brings up such wonderful questions about what marriage means that I think Anne-Marie loving Nora and welcoming, welcoming her the way she does, Anne-Marie would be affected by her arguments ultimately. Oh no, I never, I didn't say oh, that. Oh, come on, keep guessing, this is fun. <laughs> come on. I feel like I'm being set up. I've done well. So knowing that I've done really well, what do you think I did that did so well? Go ahead. You made money. Right. A lot. Yes. Are you an actress? No. A dancer. Nope. Something having to do with clothes? I find it so interesting, the kinds of things you're guessing. I write books. You're a writer? You're surprised. Well, you've made money writing? A lot. So you're a popular writer. Women's writing is very popular. There's a big interest in- Well, what do you write? Books about women. Okay. And the things women do and want and don't want and don't do and the way the world is towards women and the ways in which the world is wrong. It's a, it's a very I... smart, intelligent, thoughtful play with wonderful confrontations between characters of very different 
natures, personalities. Um, they, they, you, each, each long scene is an encounter of two very different characters and sensibilities. And, and I think that's what makes it a really, really fine play. In terms of the rehearsal process online, um, I was so happy to not have to let go of this character with, with the canceling of everything, um, that that's my strongest reaction. I am not gonna lie, I don't like it. I spend all day long on Zoom. I, I'm on Zoom during work and I'm completely saturated by this time of day. So, you know, if anyone were to say, should we re rehearse an entire play on Zoom? I'd be like, no thanks. It's just not why I do acting. It's not why I do theater. I like the live, I like the stage. I like, I've never met these actors. I haven't, haven't even met yet. So, um, so it's a bit of a struggle to, to, to come up with a stamina to get on a screen yet again and, and try to connect. I'm on Zoom all the time too. It's driving me a little crazy, but I find that um, I'm more inexperienced with acting and this is like my first um, studio show I've ever done. Uh, but I find that I'm working with these actors that are so experienced. I'm learning just as much through Zoom and I'm still really pleased with how we've been able to work this out. And uh, I'm learning every rehearsal. They're teaching me a lot by working with them and listening to them and their awesome conversations. So, I mean, it's hard, but we've been having a really good time at the same time. <laughs> in a lot of shows you're gonna have a great degree of spectacle and this show is not really about that with any luck we should have something visually interesting on the stage for you to look at but it's not about setting a tableau or having thousands of people this is an intimate play it's meant to be very personal between people and so it's very odd that I haven't met some of the people that I will be on stage with we've interacted but we've never actually met so I imagine there's a certain amount of anticipation on everybody's part to actually be in the same room. And uh, uh, we're all looking forward to that. That said, it is nice. I'm very happy the play did not die, that we're actually doing something. All my other actor, performer, designer friends are bored. <laughs> so it's good to actually be working on something. It's a relief. And that's all I have to say. <laughs>